Todoist is my go-to digital to-do app and it is phenomenal. That's the reason why I use it. But the biggest point about Todoist is on the surface, it looks simple, it's beautiful, it just works. But underneath, there's an incredible powerful engine that enables you to customize Todoist in a way that gets you really focused on the important things of the day. And today I'm gonna to show you just how you can do that using a few filters and perhaps changing the view that you see when you look at your to-do list. First up, the today view. Now, typically we would just have a regular list of all the stuff that we think or should be doing today. And that's fine for most people if you can keep that list to a relatively short list. The trouble is we are greedy, we are over ambitious, and we add so much stuff in there that what pops up on our today list is just overwhelming. But to sort the wheat from the chaff, as they used to say, because I have not heard that for a long time, what you can do is you can go into the filter area, sorry, the view area up here on the top right, and you can start changing things around. Now let's take the very simple one. Let's just use the flags. Now Todoist gives you theoretically four flags, but really it's three. And what we're doing here is we can, we can actually group tasks by flag. So essentially what you're seeing is you'll get the red flags at the top, the orange flags, which are P2 the next, and then the P3 flags. And this can be used in whatever way you want. So there's a number of ways you can do this. Your red flags, P1, are going to be your must-dos. They must be done today. So I would advise you keep that list to round about two, no more than three tasks per day. It's going to be realistic, and they are, remember, must-do tasks. Your P2, or orange tasks, can be your should do. So I should do these. But it wouldn't be the end of the world if I don't do them. And P3 are the would like to do tasks. Now that does leave you with the unflagged tasks. And those can be, well, if I get time. Another way to look at these, which is the way that I've traditionally looked at them, is my P1, my red flags, are my must-do tasks. I will do everything I can to get those done today, even if I have to pull an all-nighter. Fortunately, that doesn't happen very often. Then my P2 tasks, the orange tasks, those are my tasks that I would like to do in the morning. Now, this is not a hard and fast rule. It doesn't mean that all these P2 tasks must be done by 12 p.m. and if not, I don't do them. No, 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 no. These are the, this just helps me to put the, the list in an order, a, lot, a chronological order on the times that I'm going to do the tasks. And this will actually be reflected in my calendar so I know where I am. Now, another way that you can organize this is if you use labels. Now, I've seen a lot of people's to do is where labels are just ridiculously long. No, you've got to make your labels really clean and tight, like very focused. But they also need to be quite general. So, for instance, I have a label called administration. That's basically the coverall for anything I need to do admin -y at the computer. I also have chores because, well, don't we all have chores to do? Like I'll clean the office in between sessions of work, I'll go make the bed after my morning session. There's lots of little things that I would consider chores and I'll put them in here. Now, because of the work that I do, I create content. So a lot of my work is going to be content biased, if you like. So I've got writing time and I've also got audio visual. So right now I'm in an audio visual session of work. And then, of course, I've got clients and communications. We all probably have those customers, clients, whatever. And that's for any work that I need to do for my clients. And communications is a coverall for text messages, phone calls and emails. But again, you can use the group function in Todoist, which will then help you to be able to pull out these group all these similar tasks together. This does help you with cognitive overload. It prevents you from task switching all day, which is what leaves you exhausted at the end of the day. 
If you can sort of structure your day so that you'll say, okay, between 4 and 5 p.m. I'm doing my communications. In the morning time, I'm doing my deeper focused core work. That would be, in my case, writing or preparing these videos and any client work. But again, this will always depend on the kind of work that you do. Of course, not all of you are going to be content creators like I am. Most of you may be working with clients. So how much time are you spending working on your client work? How much time are you spending in communications? That list will change. But that's another way that you can do this. Now, when we go to the filters, one of the great thing about filters is you have a lot more control. Now, Todoist actually has gone a long way to helping us now using a little bit of AI to be able to create the perfect filters for you. But I should again caution you here and try to keep things simple. They need to be functional for you and actually use them. I've seen so many people create weird and wonderful filters in Todoist but never actually look at them which is, well, what's the point in spending all that time trying to create these filters? What I've done with my filters is I create like a workflow. So my workflow works with my today's objectives. Now these are really just today and P1 tasks. These are the tasks that I must get done today. No, they're non-negotiable. Then I have what's called today's focus. And this is really where I spend most of the day. Now you'll notice that my today's focus includes my objective task, my actionable task, my must do's. Now it's just simple because the first one, that first one at the top of my favorites list here is today's objectives. This is where when I'm writing my journal in the morning, before I finish, I actually look at that list and then I write down into my journal what those two are so that tomorrow is kind of like a bit of an accountability exercise that I can come back to that tomorrow and check off that I did them. Now my success rate at that is round about 90%. I don't think you'll ever be able to get 100% just simply because life often gets in the way but I do like to feel that if I'm 90% plus I'm on track. If I'm less than 80% I need to look at my objectives. Why are they not important enough so that I'm ignoring them? What do I need to do in order to change that approach? The final one is tomorrow's focus. Now tomorrow's focus is really all about planning. Now I do recommend to people that they spend five to 10 minutes at the end of the day planning the next day. Now there is a caveat here. If you are an early bird, you can do this first thing in the morning. But what I generally will do is I will go into this at the end of the day and I look at it and I go, okay, is this realistic based on what appointments I've got for tomorrow? With daily planning, there's a sequence. First of all, you look at your calendar. Where are your appointments for tomorrow? Because that's going to tell you how much time you have available for doing tasks. If I've got like tomorrow, I notice that I've got seven hours of meetings. Well, there's no point in me having 20 tasks as well because they're not going to get done. So my list tomorrow is probably only going to have two or three tasks on it. I'm going to avoid anything that might take up time because my focus is going to be on those seven hours of meetings. That's going to be the priority tomorrow. And then what you do at the end of it is you prioritize that list of the tasks that you want to do tomorrow and that's where you use to do is flag. So it's P1, P2 or P3. So there's just a couple or a few ways that you can manipulate your lists. Now for those of you who are more visual, you can actually create boards in Todoist. So you can use the view again in the top right here, you can change this to a board. Now again, you can follow the same principle. So along the top, your sections, your labels, entirely up to you. Now I like to keep a little bit more flexibility. If I use labels, it's kind of automatically populated for me. If I use sections, I have to drag things in. Now I do my daily planning so I know that I'm doing that human manual touch. I am deciding what is important, what needs to get done. So I can use my labels for my columns, if you like, within the board view. Now I do this with my, I can do this with my today list. I can do this with my 
my filters that I have down the side. I don't recommend doing this with your inbox. Your inbox is just a collection tool. That just wants to be a list because the inbox is not really what you should be working from. If you're doing, if you're using a to-do list properly, then you your inbox is only there to collect stuff. You're throwing stuff in all day and then when you process that stuff, that's when they go into what I like to call my holding pen. So in my case, it's going to be this week, next week, this month, next month. Whatever way you've organized your projects, as they're called in Todoist, that's where you put processed tasks from your inbox. Now, if you're adding a label and you're adding a flag at this point, then you can use the power of Todoist almost like automation because your list will then fall into those categories, whether it's a flag or whether it's a label or whether it's both. So boards are a really good way of being able to break things down. So if you're using that must do, should do, could do sort of process, then you would have like P1, P2, P3 across the top, and then you can just move things around and it will automatically create the lists for you. So as soon as you add a flag to a task, it will then go into its correct column. So it's doing it automatically for you in the background. Hence the reason why planning is so important. What you do is you plan the day before, when you come through the next day, you open up your board and you start at the left and you work across to the right. That would be the best way to do it. Now you can also do this in your today view, you can do this in your project lists, whatever way you want to do it. Again, when you look at the project list next week, this month, next month, and so on, they're not important. They're just the holding pens for when you do the next weekly planning session. The only one that you may wish to do this with is your this week folder, because that one has got all your tasks. Now, the way I would actually do this with my this week, and I do this with my this week, is I organize this by date. So my columns, if I'm using a board, it will be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it would have the dates on there. If it's used in the list, it will just, which I actually prefer, I can see as I go down the week exactly what is coming up and if I've kind of been a little bit over ambitious with any of the days. For example, I mentioned that tomorrow, Thursday, uh, I've got seven hours of meetings and if I notice in my, my this week view that Thursday's got 12, 13, 14 tasks in there, then I know that I need to go and redistribute these tasks because they're not going to get done on Thursday. So if you're using Todoist, and if you're, particularly if you're a beginner, I would go into it and just have a look and play around with some of these views. They are really, really powerful. Todoist has an awesome help website, and if you want to learn more about the filters, I would strongly recommend starting here. What I will do is I'll put a link to this website at the bottom in the show notes so that you can see and have a play with it. Don't worry, you're not going to lose anything. It's all there ready for you just to play around with and get the view that gives you the focus that you need to get your work done. And before I finish, one more thing. Now, if you're quite familiar with your, uh, how the way that filters work, you can actually type into the search box a filter query. So for instance, if you're not tracking things by your priorities, you could actually write into your search box today and P1, hit return and it will show you the own, only your P1 task for today. Similarly, you could do that uh, with labels, today and at, and then see all your communication labels or all your project labels. It's a really fast way of getting to a view that's going to give you a little bit more focus and also encourage you to work by category rather than stopping and starting and going all over the place, which as I say, just overloads your cognitive abilities in your brain and that's what leaves you feeling exhausted at the end of the day. It's this task switching. Try and group things together. That's the most effective way of getting work done because you're less focused on the number of tasks you've got to do and you actually start becoming more focused on how much time you have available to do it. That is a much better way, more focused way of doing your work. Task Going by the number of tasks is just overwhelming, stressful, and builds up so much anxiety. It's just not worth it. So I hope you found this video useful. Thank you so much for watching. And if you want to learn how I have my whole to-do is set up right now, then this video up here is the one to watch next.